Hi, welcome to our video on the arc cosine. Arc cosine, just like in other videos on inverse trig functions, if you take the arc cosine of x, we get theta. And what this means is, well, the cosine, that's the theta, sorry, the cosine of what angle gives us x? That's what this is asking. What's the angle that gives us this value? And this behaves a lot like our exploration in sine and cosine with a couple of small differences. Um, let's look at the cosine, uh, the arc cosine, sorry, the arc cosine of negative one half. All right, let's find out what angle gives us the arc cosine of negative one half. How do we do that? Well, I'm going to set up my unit circle and draw it right here. There's my x and y axis. It's my unit circle. Now the value negative one half that refers to our x direction. Right, so this distance right here is going to be negative one half. And that'll bring us up to this point over here, and we have our triangle. Now we know this hypotenuse is one, so if, if we use the Pythagorean theorem to find this side, we'll find out that it's radical three over two. And we can briefly go over that, right? So here we have negative one-half squared, that's side A squared, plus B squared was the unknown, equals one squared, which is just one. So negative one-half squared is one-fourth, plus B squared equals one. Subtract one-fourth from both sides, we get B squared equals, well, one minus a fourth is three-fourths. Square root of both sides, and B equals the square root of three over the square root of 4, which is just 2. So here we have negative 1 half, and then radical 3 over 2. And you might recognize this as a 30, 60, 90 degree triangle. This would be 30 degrees. Our theta right here is 60. And obviously the 90 degree angle is across the hypotenuse. But, but we're really looking for the theta that brings us to this point over here. So this theta right here. Right, to get to this, this line right here. And to do that, we, we know the total distance right here is 180 degrees. We already have 60 in this smaller angle. So theta, what's that going to equal? That's going to equal 180 minus 60. So theta equals 120 degrees. And if you want to write this in radians, well, we'll remember, it's, uh, it's pi radians for every 180 degrees. If you multiply this out, we get 120 over over 180, right? What's that in terms of radians? Well, it's two thirds pi radians, or you probably see it as two pi over three radians. Either way, that's the angle that gives us a cosine of negative one half. And again, the the issue that comes up is this idea that if we loop around the shape, if we add two pi back, we get back to this line and that'll give us the same cosine value, which we don't want that to happen. We don't want that. So how do we how do we restrict the range of the cosine? Well, let's look at our unit circle again. X and Y axis. Set the circle up. Okay. Well, to restrict our range, right, so we have our range and our domain, the domain, uh, just like with the sine, is x is between x is going to be constrained between negative one and positive one. Because no matter what angles we're picking for cosine, it's gonna, if you think about the cosine function, it's going to give us an x value between negative one and one. So now that we've reversed the process, our domain is was our former range, right? And that means our domain stuck between negative one and one. It doesn't matter where our angle is going to be. But the, the, the angle result, the cosine of that angle, will always bring us back between negative 1 and 1. And the, the range is actually restricted so that theta is between, right, pi and 0. And, and the reason for that is that you, if you restrict yourself with cosine between here, all the way through these quadrants, right, 0 to pi, let me just mark the way down down where zero is, here's zero, and here's pi, right, any point here, or let's say you went over here, 
even though this, these two angles are equal, these two points, this one will have a negative x and a y, and this one will have a positive x and a y. So within the first and second quadrants, um, our cosine function, right, the range actually works for the cosine function between those two quadrants, we're never going to have any repeats for the x values. Um, so, and the domain, again, is restricted between negative 1 and, and 1. So that's the basic idea of the, of the cosine. Um, and let's finish off with some interesting problems uh, and questions that really apply to all the inverse trig functions, but are, are important to kind of think about. So one thing we can look at, I'm going to use red now, <laughs> one thing we're going to look at is what happens if you have the arc cosine of x, right, that equals theta. Well then, what does it mean to have the cosine of the arc cosine of x? Well, this right here, the arc cosine of x, that equals theta, which is what we said right here. So this is just like the cosine of theta, and that's going to equal x. So the cosine of the arc cosine of x just gives us x. Now what happens if we reverse this process and we say, well, what's the arc cosine of the cosine of theta? Well, the cosine of theta equals x. So it's tempting to say that, well, doesn't this equal then just the arc cosine of x? Because the cosine of x here equals x? Well, the answer is sometimes. And it, and it works if theta right, is within the range where the arc cosine works. If theta is actually between right, pi and 0. And, but it's, it's not going to work outside this range. So let's look at what happens if, if theta is between 0 and pi. Um, we could take the cosine of oh, the, right, with the arc cosine of the cosine of 2 pi over 3. Right, 2 thirds pi, which is what we had before in the video. What's that going to be? Well, we showed that's equal to negative 1 half. So this is like the arc cosine of negative 1 half. And what do we do with that? Well, that does equal 2 pi over 3, which is what we got at the beginning of the the video, we took the arc cosine of negative one half. So in this case, the arc cosine of the cosine of two pi over three was the same thing as the arc cosine of of x of negative one half. But what if what if theta is not between these values? What if we pick something like um, three pi? Well, then the arc cosine of the cosine of three pi. What's that? Well, the cosine of, of, of 3 pi, if you think about where that is in the, the unit circle, let me sketch that up here, right, here's a unit circle. Well, where's 3 pi? Well, here's 0, here's pi, here's 2 pi, here's 3 pi, right at this point. So we went around the circle and back. And remember, theta needs to be between 0 and, and 180, or 0 and pi. Here we went outside that. And what's going to happen here is that the cosine of 3 pi, that's at this point, so x equals negative 1. Which is interesting because if we take the arc cosine of negative 1, what we are going to get is pi. Which is not what we, or it doesn't match here. The arc cosine of negative 1 is pi, which makes sense because, well, it's 3 pi is 2 pi greater than pi, so it's it's still at pi. But we didn't get, right, the arc cosine of the cosine of theta did not equal the arc cosine of x. Here, the arc cosine of, of negative 1, right, which is equal to pi, we got that from taking the arc cosine of, of 3 pi. So the, so the cosine of 3 pi, in fact, that's the arc cosine of negative 1, different number. So it didn't equal the arc cosine of, of x. So just be careful with these bounds here. Things aren't, aren't going to always be so smooth if you violate this rule of theta. Because, again, when you allow those rotations, 
you start changing the way the function works because it's going to give you multiple values for for one for one x or one or one theta, right? So one multiple thetas for one x, and we don't want to do that. All right. Well, I hope you enjoyed that.